I'm happy to report that the YouTube channel has become big enough to pay for my monthly Starbucks bill. So having achieved my life goals, you may think I may be too big time to keep doing guitar lessons, but no, there is more knowledge to be shared. And today we're gonna to talk about how to add muting to your strumming to make things more interesting and percussive. So first things first, let's talk about what muting really is. Now I've done another video on palm muting. And this is gonna be different because all it is, is your left hand or your fretting hand, if you're lefty, your fretting hand is controlling everything that you hear and do not hear. It's controlling the sustain, right? So let's just take a, like a F major voice chord right here, right? So here it is sustained. Now uh, I can control the mute of it just by taking the pressure off of my fretting hand, right? So instead of holding down, I just let go. Sustained, not sustained, right? So it seems kind of easy enough, but actually I think when you're first starting out, it can be a little bit tricky to get both of your hands to work in tandem with each other. Like for instance, if you're letting go of the pressure, like one, like one thing that beginners have is they kind of have like a death grip on every single chord that they do. So when they let go, they have to kind of like let off and reform. So it really does take a little bit of focus to be able to let go of the pressure of the chord and not actually hold the strings down. The way I like to think about it is think about your fretting hand as like holding a button, right? Or just like pushing a button whenever you do it. So if you're picking hand or if you're playing with your thumb or your fingers or whatever, if it's just going steady, just down and up, right? I'm not changing the dynamic. This is just going down and up. I can control when I hear the chord by just pushing the chord down like a button, right? So if we have like a, a four beat bar, like one and two and three and four and, I'm just gonna sustain the one and the and of one. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so if you've got that down, one question you might have is this right here isn't a full bar chord. Bar chords are probably the easiest things to mute because everything's already in place. So you just let off the bar chord and you get a full mute, right? Now open chords can be a little bit trickier. Like say, let's take a, let's take a more open chord, like a G major chord, for example, right? So to mute this, You might try doing the same thing where you just let the pressure off and it sounds like this. Because what's happening is the open strings aren't being muted. So we have to figure out a way that we can mute those open strings. And there's a couple different uh, ideas I have for you. So one thing, the, f the first way that I always try doing it was again, thinking of my right hand as just going straight down and up, not changing the dynamic or the strings I'm aiming for or anything. What I'm doing is I'm gonna lie down with my fingers, right? So instead of coming off, or trying to like bar them. I think another thing people might do to start is like play a chord and then just bar the whole thing. Like That works, but it's kind of like a really intricate dance you have to do with your left and right hand. So a better way to do it is just kind of like, when you're ready to mute it, just lay your fingers down so they're hitting what would be the open strings, right? So if you can kind of see when I'm sustained, my hand looks one way and then when I'm muted, it's just a really slight kind of shift. Like you see my wrist kind of move there to kind of lay that chord down. So even though I'm still formed on a regular G major chord, I'm not hearing any of the open strings be sustained, right? Now, another thing to do, and I think the most efficient way to do it is to shorten the stroke of your strumming hand to notes that you have fretted, right? So in the G major's case, the, the first two strings, the low E string and the A string are fretted with your fingers, right? So if you were to just take the pressure off of these two and then just shorten your stroke so you're just hitting the E and the A string, I'm kind of getting the same effect, but in a different way where I don't have to change my hand because uh, that can be a tricky thing too, right? So really just kind of aim at where you're going. Now, uh, another thing that you may have already heard is sometimes when you try to like hit a deadened, uh, uh, fretted, muted part, you'll hear a, or like a, and that's a harmonic thing. And I'm gonna do a different video on harmonics, but every now and then, just to let you know, sometimes you'd be like, where's that sound coming from? But what you're doing is some of the, the strings, harmonics are ringing out when you're trying to like mute. So you might get an unwanted thing, but eventually you'll be able to control that kind of thing, right? So uh, again, I think 
Like, let's do another chord too, like an A minor. An A minor is another really common one that's hard to kind of mute. Because there's so many open strings there, right? So our options, really we can kind of lay the chord down and concentrate on the stroke to just hit the bottom four strings, right? Now, other people will go so far as to bring their thumb in to mute everything, right? Because if you don't want to selectively hit just the bottom four strings, you're gonna to have to do something about these low ones. All right, so you can bring your thumb in. Another thing I see people do a lot is they'll use their pinky as kind of like a free agent finger that can kind of just lay down across the strings. Again, I'm not a, a huge fan of that because I kind of feel like laying your pinky to replace the chord is almost kind of like just making a new chord in and of itself. I personally think the best, most efficient way to mute on your fretting hand is to just tighten the stroke up of whatever you're doing and just hit those dead strings, right? It'll be way better for the accuracy of your strumming hand over which strings you're hitting and stuff like that, right? Now, another thing I wanna talk about is how to incorporate some muting to get different strumming styles, right? I think a really important aspect of staying in time is making sure that your strumming hand is steady, right? If you don't have a good counting thing, and you don't have to be consciously counting, you don't have to be like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I think what you do need to do is have some kind of system for keeping this steady, right? Even if you're not hitting the strings all the time, there's an internal rhythm that is happening that's being manifested in either your strumming hand, some people tap their foot, some people tap their head. There's a lot of different ways that it can come out, right? But a great way to practice that and practice being able to selectively mute things is by taking a chord and a strumming pattern and then just selectively adding things in and out. So for example, let's take that same kind of F major, F major seven chord, whatever, however you want to look at it. And we're going to do this. We're going to go one and two and three and four and, right? So we have technically eight spots, two spots per count. One and two and three and four and. The ands are all going to be upstrokes. The numbers are all going to be downstrokes. And we're gonna selectively change these around. So the first one we're gonna do is where it's just down up and then the rest of them is gonna be muted. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. You don't even have to count it out loud. Sometimes it helps. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, right? So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding different things. So let's just add the downbeat on the three. So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. and once you're able to do more and more of these you're going to be able to have a better ear for the strumming patterns that you can hear a question i get asked a lot is how do i pick out a strumming pattern from a song and more often than not you can always find it by doing this by having uh just a down and an up thing going on for every beat and then just selectively picking out the ones you want you don't always have to have mutes you can just skip like this Let's, let, let's add one and two and three and four and. So we'll get the, the first two, like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So basically, I'm kind of muting the middle of it, right? If we didn't have the mutes and we just did the time, it'd be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. All right, so if you don't have a counting structure behind you, you're really just stabbing at moments in time. And until you have really, really good rhythm, like internal timing, it's hard to do that in a repeatable way that you're not getting out of time. So doing an exercise like this, where you can just randomly pick things, like let's not even start on the one, let's go, let's mute the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. And eventually you can kind of get rid of that and just start using your ears to kind of feel out where you want the sustained parts and where you want the muted parts. Because again, it's all a coordination between your left and the right hand. Eventually you can start adding dynamics, right? So like, let's say I want to really emphasize like the three. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. So I'm still muting the three, but I'm doing it in a more aggressive way. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. 
So once you can kind of get an ear for where you want to put your dynamics, where you want to have sustained, where you want to have muted, it all becomes a lot easier and it's all because you have some kind of internal timing rhythm that is always steady, right? And then eventually your left and right hands become coordinated to the point that you don't have to think about it, you don't have to count it, you can just feel it. And then when you hear something, you can diagnose what's happening and then execute without even having to think about whether it's on the one, the end of two, the timing, stuff like that. You'll just really have a good ear for it and your hands will be more coordinated with each other.